Hello, welcome to Storytime. Today I'm going to read chapter one and two from Diver's Daughter, a Tudor story about me, written by Patrice Lawrence, illustrated by Alette Strathos, and published by Scholastic. Chapter one, the first drive. I hit the water. No, it hit me. It slapped me in the face then pulled me under, my head filled with its stink. I tried to hold my breath, but the water's wet fingers were in my nostrils, inching up and up. I couldn't open my mouth to scream. If I did, I'd be dead. But at this rate, I was going to be dead anyway. The River Thames' strong arms yanked me away from the boat, away from my mother, away from my life. Below the surface, the Thames talks to you. It's a stab of beaks as the gulls die for fish. It's a sound of oars plunging in and out of the heavy water as the pilots glide the merchant ships up to the walkway. As I sank further down, I thought I heard different sounds, proper voices, children's voices, like mine. If I could, I, I would open my eyes. I was sure I'd see those children floating on the current, children like me who'd Wobbled and fallen. Tell us your story, Eve. They whispered. Tell us your story. Chapter two, a puppet for a penny. My name is Eve. I'm 12 years old and I'm surprised I've lived that long. I'm a Southwark girl, born and bred, just outside London across the River Thames. But I lived in other places too. Sometimes I still wake up in the middle of the night, gasping for breath. In my dreams, the bed linen turns to water, pressing against my eyes, blocking my ears from everything apart from my slamming heart. Then I hear my mother calling. Mpwenda, you are safe. She calls me Mpwenda, her beloved. I surface out of my nightmare into the morning. Three times I've ended up in deep water so far. Twice, I nearly drowned. The third time, well... I'm getting ahead of myself. I'll start by telling you about the first time. It was the last day of the Bartholomew Fair. I'd never been to the fair before, even though every year, Mama had promised to take me. You know what adults are like. They look you in the eye, make you a promise, and then forget it by the time they have to look away. But Mama isn't like that. She doesn't make promises that she doesn't think she can keep because so many people have broken promises to her. There was a good reason why Mama hadn't kept her promise before. The fair lasts for three days in August, and on the first day, every year, I'd wake up, lie still, and listen. Every year I'd hear the same thing. Rain. I could hear it dripping in the pots Mama had lined up under the eaves, that is, the years when we even had eaves, of course. The August before, we had nowhere to sleep and we came close to being arrested as vagabonds. Eventually, we'd sneak into a grain store, but we spent the dark hours fighting what must have been the King Rat of Southwark. I knew that we definitely wouldn't be going to the fair that year. The summers when we did, we had somewhere to live. I'd creep out of bed and check outside the window to see how bad the rain was, and it would always be the same, mud and dung oozing across the cobbles, trampled into a slippery mix by horses' hooves with little rivers of mud running along the pathways, mixing the muck into a special sticky mess that never wanted to let go of you. Even the dogs looked sideways as it tried to find a way around it. Mama and I didn't fancy leather boots or even a pair of clogs to get us through that mess. I just had my old pumps and no matter how many times Mama tried to sew it back, the seam kept unravelling, so my toe stuck out at the front. By the time I'd walked three steps in that mud, I'd have been barefoot. Even if we had braved it on the muddy streets, we would still have had to cross the river to get to London. The quickest way was by the wherry boat, as the bridge was always jammed with carts and traders. But who wanted to sit in a small boat on a wild, deep river in the rain? So every year, instead of going to the fair, I ended up doing chores. Last year, I churned butter from dawn to dinner. After that, my arms were so strong I could have squeezed the butter straight from the cow. This day was different. We'd been lodging at the Boar's Head, and in off Tooley Street, up under the eaves again. I woke up while it was still dark. 
Mama had left buckets out, but I couldn't hear the drop, drop of water. I squinted into the darkness. I could just about see the dark shapes of the dresser and Mama's sewing basket on the table. The travellers in the room below were laughing and singing and someone in another room was coughing hard. I could hear the ostler, who looked after the guest's horses, humming to himself, the courtyard, and then the clop of the horse's hooves as he led them to the stables, next to me. Mama was still sleeping, so I knew it must be very early in the morning. I didn't want to leave my warm place in bed because it had taken me a long time to get comfortable last night. The inn had been busy and Master Horstead, the landlord, had Mama serving guests long into the night. It was hard for me to sleep when Mama wasn't next to me. It still is. I had turned onto my side to try to get back to sleep, but something was wrong. No, something was right. I'd gone to sleep listening to the rain falling into the buckets. But it was all quiet now. I lay perfectly still and listened. No rain. I nudged Mama. Go back to sleep, Eve. I sat up, pulling the blankets from her. She tried to yank it back, but I was holding it tight. Listen, Mama, the rain stopped. What if it has? She grumbled. It means we can go to the fair. I scrambled out of bed and looked out of the window. A faint line of light spread up from the east. A dog barked and it started all the others barking too. Mistress Sleet opened her window and shouted at them. She should have known better. The dogs just thought she meant bark louder. Mama sighed and sat up. Are you sure it's not raining? Yes, we can go, can't we? We'll see, Mbwenda. Mama's will see could mean yes, but I had to be patient. It wasn't just down to her to decide. Master Horstead usually had a long list of chores for Mama to do, and then Mistress Horstead had an even longer one on top of that. Mama had to do them. If she didn't, they'd make us pay more for the room, and we couldn't afford that. We didn't want to end up fighting rats in the grain store again. We knew we were lucky to even have this. So, Mama set off to change the bed linen in the rooms that had been occupied while I cleaned the chimney grates and built up the kindling and wood ready for fresh fires. Then we waited. And waited. Finally, Mistress Horstead gave us permission to go to the fair, so long as we returned in time to help serve the guests in the evening. At last, I was really going to the famous Bartholomew Fair. First though, we had to get there. On fair days, the bridge across to London was more crowded than ever. I thought we would at least try, but Mama said no. By the time we'd managed to get across to the other side, she said we'd have to turn around and come right home. I'm sure she was right, and that was one of her reasons for saying no, but I also knew that there was something on the bridge that she didn't want to see. The traitors, or what was left of them. You see, I was born in 1558 the same year that Queen Elizabeth became Queen. Mama hadn't been in England very long, so didn't really know what life had been like here before, but the old people in the taverns still talk about it. It had been a hard time for everyone. The Portuguese on the island where Mama was born were Catholics, like England had been. But when Elizabeth became Queen, England didn't know what it wanted. Queen Elizabeth's father, King Henry VIII, had been Catholic, but then he'd stopped and made himself head of a new Church of England so that he could marry Elizabeth's mother. When he changed his religion, everyone else meant to as well. When Henry died, his son Edward didn't want to change things, but Edward died when he wasn't much older than me. Then his Catholic sister Mary became queen, and everyone was supposed to be Catholic again. I'd heard that she wanted to kill everyone who wasn't a Catholic. Now it was Elizabeth who was queen, and it was forbidden for anyone to be Catholic again. It didn't bother me so much, as nobody had bothered asking Mama and me how we worshipped. But Queen Elizabeth had upset many people who had thought they could be Catholic again. The ones that were caught found themselves locked up in the Tower of London. Once they'd confessed to being Catholic, their heads were chopped off and stuck on pikes on top of the gateway to the bridge as a warning sign to others. You couldn't see their faces because they were covered in tar. Mama still thought their eyes were watching her. So, no going over the bridge. That meant crossing in a wherry boat. I was nervous. 
but I reminded myself that this was part of the big adventure. As we walked towards the river stairs on Pepper Alley, we soon realised that we weren't the only ones with that plan. The whole of Southwark seemed to be heading to the fair, jostling on the jetty for a boat to take them across the water. The tide was low. It looked like we could almost walk across the stones and mud to London, but even like this, the water could be deadly. Mama held me tightly. People sometimes looked at us because our skin was browner than everyone else's. And Mama was always worried that something might happen to us. I think that was because of what had happened to her in the past. 